everyone. Hello, 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 little ASMR. Welcome to Thicker, 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 Thicker Thoughts Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thicker Thoughts Podcast. I am your girl, TL, and I am here with a very special guest, you know. Um, this year, I wanted to talk to people who I feel like I connect with, and I feel like I um, have history with, but they also, um, are people who, um, carry themselves in a manner of strength and courage and also with beauty. And so, um, I'm gonna let my friend introduce herself. Well, hello, I'm Mulani Flowers. Um, what can I say a little bit about me? Hobbies include dancing and art. Just yes. a short verb. <laughs> Dancing and art, but she can also be the face. You see her <laughs> face. Um, so, we met in high school. Mm-hmm. And so, we met in high school. We've been knowing each other forever. And she's always just been a supporter of me. And we've always just kept in contact and been supportive with each other through, you know, our journey of life. And mm-hmm. seeing each other grow up and grow into um individuals who are doing great things now like i don't know i think it's weird um i think it's pretty awesome because you know the goal of going to college is to meet similar people and i feel like when we went to college we did meet similar people but it wasn't it wasn't like hard for us to gravitate back towards each other because i like to have real people in my circle and i feel like you're a really real friend so yeah Yeah. (laughs) i feel like um Having real friends in your circle is something that is important, Mm -hmm. right? So if I have a friend that um, supports me like I support them, I want to be able to give back to them and pour into them and let their story be heard. Mm -hmm. Um, So you like to do, to me, when I look at your pictures, I see things that you know, I would never feel like I could do it. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like I could never rock it. Like, I always like, okay, I'm going to give me a, like, a little curly wig. <laughs> a little curly look. But you do things that, you know, are uniquely to yourself. And those are the things that, you know, I enjoy, like, seeing. And that's where I want to step into. Yeah. So what inspires you, you know, with your style and your makeup and I think for me personally, okay, so as a plus size person, you know, we're constantly talked about being plus size in different lights. And for me, I've always told myself that being plus size doesn't stop you from being the who, like being the you you want to be. So for me, it's like my style, my influence, it comes from people telling me that I can't do things. Like, okay, you're not going to look good in this makeup style. Okay, I'm going to put that makeup on. You're not going to look good in this hair color. Okay, well, I'm going to put on the brightest hair colors, like red, blue. I've worn highlighter colors. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) I just feel like your look shouldn't be determined by other people. And so the more that you give yourself the freedom of range to, like, develop your own look, the more you grow into yourself. For me... I feel like as you know, I'm not, I'm a curvy girl, right? Um, I am a size 12, 14. Um, So it's like a lot of people feel like, you know, when you get to that size, they're like, oh, you need to do this or you need to do that or you need to try to control this and control that. And I really made this podcast because I want people to understand that curvy women um, the, we go through a type of oppression that people don't know about, mm-hmm. especially when you're um, a minority and you're, you know, plus size, um, you go through things, right? Mm-hmm. And people don't really look at you in society as, okay, you fit the beauty standards of what our current society is. Mm-hmm. And it's like all these beauty standards and all these labels and stuff that people are putting on us we can't really get to you know what you know what truly beauty is and yeah. I, so what do you think that beauty is hmm. uh, to me I feel like beauty is the true unfiltered expression of oneself and I say this because the world is so stuck on labels 
And when you get stuck on labels, you tend to rule your life around those different labels. You stick a label on everything you do in your life. And when you remove those labels and those constraints, you start to do things that you would have never imagined that you would have wanted to do. Like personally for me, before I even started wearing makeup, I used to always say like, yeah, makeup's not gonna be for me. It's not one of those things I'm gonna get into. But then I got into makeup because I didn't put those labels on myself. Like, okay, well, you know, sometimes they tell you like as a plus size person, your face is too round to wear certain types of makeup. You need to contour your face and cut it down. And you know, everybody loves a good contour and a good yes. face shape, but my natural face shape is beautiful in its own. Yes. So that's why it's just for me, it's like when you define beauty, Beauty is not giving a care what other people think about you. Because once you put those labels on yourself, it's the more, less, and less you start to have that self-confidence in yourself. Yes. And to me, like, beauty in America, well, beauty for a black woman, um, it doesn't really, it has to deal with our inner work mm -hmm. within ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we like the outside things, you know, we love the materialistic things. We love those things. But in order to feel beautiful, you have to feel beautiful from the out, from the inside out. Mm -hmm. That's what I like to tell people. So if you're beautiful in the inside, you feel, you know, love, you feel strength, you feel courage, you feel mm -hmm. um, in, in most of the time, you know, as you know, minority black women, we feel like we're carrying the weight of the world on our back. Mm -hmm. And so how I feel beautiful is when I'm looked at as strong mm -hmm. or passionate or somebody can take me out of this uh, realm and say, let me, let me love on you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let me care about you. Those are the moments that I feel beautiful. Of course I feel beautiful when I put me on a badass wig <laughs> and I got me some lashes like, mm -hmm. you know, and I got me some nails on and all that stuff. I feel beautiful, but I can feel beautiful in my element and as mm -hmm. myself and um, just being honest, you know, with who I am. So talking about, you know, who I am, do you ever feel like in moments that you like cannot be yourself? Um, I think that now for me personally, I'm pushing the boundaries of who I want to be and who I can be as a person. Um, just a little bit of a backstory, you know, I was raised in an African household. So um, I immigrated to the US when I was two. I've moved around quite, like, quite frequently. Um, I've always had these rules and limitations for exactly how my life is supposed to be. So once I started like fully accepting like, hey, you know, I don't want this type of life for myself. I want this type of life for myself. And you know, with certain, um, certain people in the family sometimes they have these ways that they went about their life and they want you to have those same constraints on your life but for me once I got out of that headspace of okay well I'm not living for you I'm living for me and knowing that I'm living for myself yes and that I feel like that's something that we struggle with um too it's like mm -hmm. the way people especially you know in our age yes. the weight of our parents is like mm -hmm. oh we want to make our family proud we want to make our mother proud we want to make our grandmother proud our aunties our uncles and it's hard because making them proud isn't always what the end goal for ourselves is mm -hmm. um so i often go through this um a lot right i went to school for journalism um my mom was like, oh, you, you're you going to be a great nurse, right? You're going to be a great nurse. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to be a nurse. I don't think that's for me, right? So um, I constantly battled with myself like, okay, should I be doing medical or should I be doing what I love? Or was this the right path for me? Or, you know, should, is this not the right path for me? Um, journalism is my heart. Being in the media mm -hmm. is my heart, you know. Um, expressing myself social justice that is my world right and um i'm pretty sure you can combine all that with nursing but why well, i want to waste my time doing something that is really not my passion and what i love to do and you know uplift people and i feel like the weight of that um and just the way that you know our parents were raised and they know mm -hmm. how you know the stereotypes in society are put out against us yeah so they want to tell us okay this is from their circumstances, this is what I went through when I was 
coming into society. These are the things that I've saw or the things mm-hmm. that I've seen, you know. So before you hit this roadmap, I'm going to tell you to do this. Mm-hmm. But it may not be what's on your heart and what's on your mind mm-hmm. in that moment. So with me now, what I'm trying to do for 2023 is that I want to live for myself. Yeah. I want to live like it. My mom is real against her colors. Like, she don't like the blonde. My grandma don't like the blonde. They don't like all that. But I do. I love coloring my hair. Like, I love it. I want to do what is, you know, for me, right? I want to make myself happy um, before showing up and making other people happy. So, what are some of your goals for 2023? So, I can relate to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. about like going into college with this one set mindset and so i was supposed to be a cardiologist that was actually one of my dreams as a kid and that's an open heart surgeon and i was like you know i'm gonna go to school i'm gonna be a cardiologist i'm gonna study the hearts because we had heart complications in like my american side of the family so you know when i immigrated here my grandfather was dating someone that was american and they're from south carolina so i got in like i got a whole nother side of a family and so they had heart issues and i was like well you know when I get to school, I'm going to be a doctor. And that's my dream. That's my goal. But it was also my parents' dream and my parents' goal. And, you know, growing up as black kids, for me personally, I feel like they put us into this box of if you're not going to be a doctor, a lawyer, or let's say a nurse, if you're not going to be any of those three things, then you're going to be a drug dealer. You're going to be on the streets. You're going to be doing all these crazy things. And for me, being African, that's what they beat into my head every day. But I think that sometimes with the evolution of different generations, we all get our own different mindsets. And like you said, with the different roadmaps, like they want you to go through this certain experience exactly how they did it. But being that we are our own beings and we have our own mindsets, we go through the same experience, but we experience it completely different. So for me, I think my goals like this year, um, when I was in school going for pre-med, I switched my majors over. I double majored in theater and journalism because I love to write. Creative writing is one of my big passions and I've always wanted to write for somebody. But on the side too, I love the arts. I love everything that has to do with acting. So my goal right now is to push myself more into like slightly the influencer light because I just rebranded my YouTube channel. I just started doing some things there. So I wanted to do that. And I feel like once I do all of that and I start there, I can build my platform on a basis to get into the acting world. And that's on period. <laughs> so we gonna cut to commercial and we be right back. Want your brand or business featured on the plug? Advertise with us at plugnetworkonline.com. Again, advertise with us at plugnetworkonline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. Okay, so we're about to play a game called Dope or Nope. And the object of this game is, you know, I'm going to show my friends some looks, you know, some some makeup looks that I think, you know, that people, I don't know, that some of them kind of blew up the internet. Some of them are just, you know, mm-hmm. I think that they just need more light. So we're going to play a game called Dope or Nope. And um, I'm going to put some makeup looks on the screen and you tell me what you think. So this first one is a JT's birthday picture. 
<laughs> so what you feel about the blonde eyebrows? Cause I want to try that. Like I'm gonna step out my comfort zone. Let me give me some bleach. Let me give me some like you know some little bleach blonde eyebrows. What you think about the the blonde eyebrow thing? I think, to me personally, I think the bl- like blonde eyebrows are a look, and they're a statement because when you do blonde eyebrows on like darker skinned people, sometimes. Depending on the makeup that you do, it makes it look like you don't have eyebrows, like, at all. And Mm -hmm. so, with JT, that's kind of the instance here. I feel like her eyebrows and her hair matching is Mm -hmm. a really good idea. Because you don't want to have black hair with blonde eyebrows. So, I do really like the look. Um, I love, like, the eyeshadow makeup, like, the blue that she did. I thought it was really cute, and it all went together. Personally, for me, I wouldn't do um, no eyebrows. (laughs) I feel like when you take your eyebrows away, it really puts attention on your forehead. And... (laughs) I got a lot of head and eyebrow, no eyebrows and head ain't gonna work out for me. <laughs> but I would definitely say this is a dope look. See, I want to do like I was thinking about doing something for Valentine's Day, right? So I'm thinking about doing something real extra. Like, let me give myself some pink eyebrows. Like, I don't know. Like, I always just wanna wanted to do pink eyebrows, but I don't know. Like the you know I gotta be Dexter and be in the laboratory a little bit. And, try it out but i think yeah i've definitely done colored eyebrows okay so what color eyebrow do you think matches well like if you was doing a valentine's day look what mm-hmm. color eyebrow would you do okay so for me i found that the colors that work best on my eyebrows are i would say darker shades but mm-hmm. also depending on the type of concealer you use you can use really really bright pigments and so Ooh. with darker skin, sometimes we tend to lose our color. Like certain colors turn like darker or muddier. And so that's why people of color think they can't wear like really crazy colored looks. But it's not hard at all. So I would definitely say colors like red or pink would be really cute for Valentine's Day. Or if you want to be adventurous, do two different colors. Um, okay. Next one. This one is um, by Nazaria Looks. So, what do you think about this? I am actually a huge fan of her. Um, I'm a huge fan of her because she does a lot of abstract things. So, with my makeup, I'm I, I'm into doing natural beauty looks, like glam looks. But I've also recently gotten into like painting my entire face mm-hmm. and doing blue looks with blue eyebrows and all these different colors. And the reason that I'm like really, really into the makeup looks that she does is because she's a darker skinned woman pushing the boundaries of what color she can put on her face now this one it's giving me kind of like kiss like rocker and she threw some colors in there kind of like rainbow rocker if you think about it but yeah for me personally only because i've seen her work i would give this a dope i don't know about the hair choice with it okay for me personally i um i like the colors like mm-hmm. i like the white um and one of the things that i struggle with is putting colors on my eyes like mm-hmm. i want to be able to put more colors on my palette like i don't know i feel like i'm a real like neutral kind of girl like you know and i want to try to step out more like i like the mullet like i want a mullet that's something that I'm going to do before the year ends. They call me ghetto. They can tell me I'm going back to the 90s, but I want me a 27 piece of top, and mm-hmm. I want me a little 30 inch in the back. Oh, yes. I actually just recently did a mullet look. Um, I was, I think it was last year, I was Ronnie for Halloween from Players mm-hmm. Club, but I reused, the, I reused the mullet, and um, I reused the mullet, and I did a makeup look with it, and that's like one of my, like, pictures that I I changed it to my Facebook profile picture because again like people can't put labels and limitations on what you do with yourself like we can pull from any era and be that era we could be the 90s the 80s the 70s and it'd be unique like to you so Mm -hmm. okay so we're gonna go to the next look okay this is a scissor look that everybody's been doing with the (sighs) no scissor (sighs) okay my this is my opinion on scissor um her, she has like some weird lies going on. I don't know if like that's a thing. Like she was like, yeah, I've never watched TV. 
I'm like, what? You said you never watched TV. She's like, yeah, I've never ate a piece of cake. What? Why you ain't never ate a piece of birthday cake? <laughs> anyway, SZA, I love her, but, like, the lying's got to come to down here. Like, okay, this is a picture of her before she had her plastic surgery. You know, she had her yes. rhinoplasty and stuff that on her nose. Mm-hmm. Well, well, this is a picture of her with her plastic surgery. But before her plastic surgery, she was a totally different person. Then she was like, she came out with this album, and everybody was like, oh, my God, SZA looks, like, cut. Like, you know. And that was just like... Okay, she got plastic surgery, but this little Kill Bill look she got going on, you know, she had Vivica Fox in the car mm-hmm. on the video, like they was in Kill Bill. I like the look, and um, Nazari, I think her name is Nazaria, mm-hmm. she actually did this makeup too. Oh wow! So I think she has like a distinctive makeup style with the lines and stuff. And mm-hmm. So, how do you feel about this look? Like, how you feel about SZA? You know, she changed her look. <laughs> um, besides the fibbing, I'm actually a huge SZA fan. Okay. The irony of it all is I was just listening to her album on the way here in the car. And that's like, I parked on her album. But this makeup look is actually really pretty for SZA. Mm-hmm. I think that it really, like... I like how it goes all the way up into like her eyebrow bone. Mm-hmm. That's really cute. And I love the color palette that she chose to do. Like the brighter colors with the different lines and different techniques. I feel like that's SZA's thing. Is like she does a really bright color and then she puts like a, let's say like a cheetah print or like a different type of line formation on her eyelid and that's what makes it unique to her. So yeah, I would give this look definitely a dope. Okay. Dope. Okay, SZA. <laughs> okay. This is one of my faves. Rico. No, this is um Latrice Royale. Is that Latrice? Yes. She dressed up as Catwoman. And I was like, period. Um, this was like kind of my fave because I feel like she, I feel like not enough plus size women uh in the makeup and beauty industry and also in the drag industry. I feel like mm-hmm. they don't step out of this so-called comfort zone. Yes. And I feel like she she does that for me. Mm-hmm. And so does Silky, but <laughs> I feel like she does that for me. And I think with this look, you know, with the, with the you know, the diamonds, you know, the mm-hmm. cat burglar. I love that. Accessories, accessories. So what you think about this look? I am definitely in love with it. I'm a huge Latrice fan. I've been watching Latrice for years. When I found out what like RuPaul's Drag Race was, I knew for a fact I wasn't gonna stop watching. So Latrice has been one of my girls and I love that she pushes the boundaries with her body and like the different things that she wears, especially being like a plus size black woman. I just, I adore her. So I definitely love this makeup look. Catwoman is something that some plus size girl was, girls would see and be scared to do because Catwoman has like this very small figure and this very tight waist and you know, she looks like she barely eats but she always gets down with the bad guys. But being plus size and doing a look like this, it just, it's amazing. This is definitely like top tier dope. Yes, dope. Latrice, you dope. (laughs) Shantae, you stay. This look is Lizzo. She got kind of like the anime ass going on with the white eyeliner. Um. I love Lizzo's looks. She I wish she brows? she has thin brows and she like contoured her nose in a little mm-hmm. bit. I love Lizzo's looks. I just wish she did more looks. Like yes. you feel what I'm saying? Like I mm-hmm. wish she was just like, I'm serving look after look, look after, after look, look after <laughs> look. I'm gonna eat you hoes. Yeah, because Lizzo steps. She does. And when she steps, like her tours are immaculate. Like she eats these hoes up. And that's why it's like I don't know. Krishan Rock said something that really made me mad. Because mm. everybody know I'm a Krishan Rock stan. I'm a stan. But she made me mad. Oh, she said, Lizzo just dressed up like me for attention. Bitch, Lizzo don't need no attention from you. That's Lizzo. But I love the look. What you think about the look? I definitely stan Lizzo. Now, some people might drag me. I love this look. I'm just like... The thin eyebrow, Mm -hmm. it's always been weary to me, but it works especially for this look. And I love how like sharp and angular her face looks. 
Now, at first when I saw this picture, I didn't think that was Lizzo. But this is actually a really good photo. It gives me very much editorial. You know, when we used to watch America's Next Top Model growing yes, up. Yes, it gives. And they did like all these crazy top. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would definitely give this a dope too. Okay. Lizzo got a dope. Lizzo dope mm -hmm. anyways. So this next look is Lotto. She did her Area 24 uh, birthday party. She don't. I don't understand why some of these artists, they don't post the MUA who does mm. their makeup looks mm. and they don't give them the credit. So mm. when I looked this one up, I was like, unknown. Cause she wouldn't, she tagged the designer and all that, but she wouldn't tag the MUA. So in this look, she got a pink mullet going on with her pink, you know, little body and all that. I, I believe it's giving alien. I'm just yes. tag the MUA. Mm -hmm. Because that takes, that discredits the makeup artist from all the work that they've done to help you achieve this amazing look. And I feel like this look right here, even though me a lot of beef in a little bit, but this look right here, this look is very like, this is beautiful. Like I love, like I, I was just talking about doing bright colors. I'm a huge bright color person. I am recently getting into like paints. So mm -hmm. there's makeups and then there's makeup paints. It's where mm -hmm. you could paint yourself and be a whole different person. Like Hallie, um, she just did a, a look from the movie Avatar and she was all blue and she had, she looked just like an avatar. Dope. So like looks like these always are going to be dope to me. Like they're amazing. So this pink look is awesome. So maybe I'm going to have to have you, you know, come paint me up on another episode. We'll be right back after this commercial. <laughs> I'm going to get some paint on my face. We'll be back. Want your brand or business featured on the plug? Advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. Again, advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. got done you know doing dope or nope and you know sometimes makeup can be a flop mm -hmm. so what are your makeup don'ts like what are makeup don'ts for you oh okay we're getting into the makeup don'ts so for me personally it has taken me quite some time to achieve this level of finesse <laughs> to get everything together so always make sure your foundation shade matches if your foundation shade does not match, don't put that makeup on. Go to the store and you color match your face with the foundation. You gotta make sure your concealer matches. You can wear concealer that's too light and it makes you look like a ghost. And I feel like concealer and foundation are kind of those hard things, especially for darker skinned people or brown skinned people because sometimes they could have the perfect concealer for brown skinned people but not match the foundation at all. But sometimes you can also finesse those things too. Like I've done an entire look with just concealer, no, um, no foundation. So those are like two big things. And then for me too, eyebrows. Now I am working on my eyebrows. That is the most, that's the thing that has evolved the most. And it's going to keep evolving because I feel like you can do your eyebrows so many different ways and there's so many different limitations. So as long as you don't have big blocks. Now, when I first started doing my makeup, my eyebrows touch the top of my forehead <laughs> and the top of my eyelid. I don't know if you've seen me with makeup on. We were in college, but yes. I looked a hot, complete mess. But <laughs> when I was in college, let me see, let me see. You know, I was like, I was like the one girl that always had like the frontal. Like, mm -hmm. I, for me, like, I don't know. I always had the frontal. Like, you know, I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to get my hair done. 
I'll be back. Come back, frontal. <laughs> I always had a frontal. It wasn't nothing I, like, if I ain't have a frontal on, y'all know something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Frontal. I always had a frontal. But I never really knew how to do my makeup. I think I got into makeup a little bit, but like now I'm stepping into a comfort zone for me. Um, I've tried some different things with my makeup, right? Mm -hmm. And I think I got some don'ts. So like at one point I was trying to do box moles. I was trying to do moles. And so I used to take my black eyeliner glue and dip it in a, in a, the end of my eyebrow, uh, my angle brush and dip it on the end and like dab it on my face like I have moles but you know how the little glue I was like yeah that's gonna look good cause the glue you know it rises up it gets mm-hmm. a little crinkly you know and be like yeah girl my mole is coming off a little <laughs> yeah I used to do that and then I think a makeup don't for me everybody's gonna gonna sh- you know annihilate me after I say this I do not like um the little like I don't know some colors I like in the eyebrows mm-hmm. me yeah like I don't like when people do like the little cuts in the eyebrows oh, oh oh like people do cuts in the eyebrows and I don't like that like with makeup like mm-hmm. you don't get a cut just like you know slice it up don't be scared <laughs> slice it on up um so you know being to me being in this society and just being yourself and, you know, being around, you know, people who are themselves, it mm-hmm. makes you feel better. Yes. It makes you feel like you're empowered to be who you are. So if you tell me about a time where you've been in a moment where you felt like, OK, I can't be myself. Or I can be myself. You can't. Um. So, I would say probably when I was in high school. Okay. So, um, I guess we know this, but the viewers don't know this. But, like, I started my transition, like, five years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I was in high school, going off of the things that my parents said, um, I always thought, like, you know, dress, dress masculine. Don't dress feminine. And you have to embody this era of masculinity because in the in the normal society for their standards it's always there's women and there's men and so when you grow up a little black boy you gotta dress like a little black boy you don't dress like you a little black girl you dress like you a little black boy so for me when i first entered high school like it just it was all about dressing masculine i seen things that other people did you know there were other people in our school that dressed exactly how they wanted to be Yes. But I had put this box and this limitation on myself. And I was so scared to do that because, you know, what would the people at home think? And it was just like after a certain point, when I started to get into my senior year, like I was saying, we put these labels and these constraints on our life because of the ideals we're raised with, the experiences that we have with sometimes our parents, sometimes with other people. You know, when you're a part of the LGBT community, sometimes you get bullied because you're a certain way and people don't understand that. When you're plus sized, you get bullied because you're a certain way and people don't understand that. So it's like, there were times where I felt like I was constrained to this box of masculinity. I was constrained to this box of, okay, well, you're too big. You need to lose weight so that you can fit this certain size and this a certain mold. You want to be plus size and you want to be a woman, but you also want to be like, you want to be plus size and you also want to be a woman. Like those are two things that were big like constraints on me. So I had mental battles with myself all the time. Like, hey, you know, I have to be this person. I don't want to be that person. I want to be this person. So, like, when I first went to school, I didn't come out until, like, I would say I waited until, like, the middle of my freshman year. And then wanting to transition, that was something that I never thought about until I got to college. Until I thought to myself, like, well, you know, I have this bad notion of um, femininity for me is bad. So... I have to have these internal battles and struggles with myself where like, okay, why wear this thing? And I feel comfortable and I feel beautiful in it. But then in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, you know, you're busting out of the side of this outfit or, you know, um, you look too feminine and masculine up a little bit. But once I got into the mindset of, well, you know, 
I'm going to be paying my bills in the future. I'm going to be putting food on my own table. I'm going to put the clothes on my back. I'm going to go and work to get the money that I need to get to secure myself as a person. So it's like once I realize that, you know, yes, mom and dad are going to be there to support me, like sometimes financially. But outside of that, it's going to be me, 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 me. And it's not a selfish thought. It's just, a, well, what are you going to do to secure yourself? Because if mom and dad are not always going to put food on the table. They're not going to always tell you how to dress, how to act. And you're going to grow into your own adult and your own person. And why resent yourself when you could love yourself? Yes. Um. So I, when we first met, mm-hmm. I transferred from a private school, right? I came from a private school and I came to Southern. And I was like, I was like, like, some of the stuff that I seen on my first day in that school, you know, I had been in a private school where it was hard for me to even be myself as, you know, as a a black girl. Mm -hmm. Like, I had box braids that was all the way down, you know, like, I was, I had, like, the long box braids, right? And everybody was like, oh, my God, how long did it take to do your hair? Can I touch it? (laughs) Oh, and I was like, no. Um, But it made me feel like I was in a moment where I wanted to be around people who Mm -hmm. made me feel like I was secure enough to be myself. Mm -hmm. So I came home and told my mom, I was like, I won't go there no more. So I transitioned um, to Southern, and I feel like that in Southern, that's where I found that, okay, I can be, there are other people who are like, Mm -hmm. like, you know, doing theater and stuff. We both share that in common, you know singing, dancing, we both share that in common. Mm -hmm. That's something that I didn't have, you know, at my private school. So transitioning to Southern and meeting people like you, you know, helped me become a better version of breaking out of my shell and being myself. Um, And it's just like, we go through society. um, I believe that the more that we become ourselves, the more we'll set the standards, the Mm -hmm. more we'll set the trends, you know. And inspiring people who, you know, may have the same quirks as us. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my questions. Um, If you could have anybody play you in a light movie, Mm. who you think will play you? (laughs) You know, being asked this question, I'd probably be like Beyonce or somebody like that. But no, I would want someone to play me that. Because <clears throat> this, is, this is actually like going into one of my passions. Um, I feel like in the industry now, yes, acting is a thing. Yes, as an actor, you can play any role because it is, in fact, acting. But I feel like true, like, rawness for a certain role comes from people that have been through your same experience. People that maybe they haven't been through exactly what you've been through, but they know what it feels like and they can carry that emotion over onto the screen. In my, like, far future... I want to be a director that shoots LGBT plus films as well as films for people of color that share our story. So for me, if I was to choose someone to play me, I would choose someone like, um, have, have you seen Pose? Mm-hmm. Um, like Dominique? Someone mm-hmm. like, I would choose another trans woman to play me. Someone that has been through my struggle, maybe not exactly my struggle, but knows the emotions that come and carry with it. Now, my struggles are not everything that defines me. They're just a small piece that have boosted me to be where I'm at now in life. You know, they're a driving force. So it would definitely have to be someone from my same walk of life, my same experience. And it would also have to be a person of color. There's no, I don't want nobody that's like not a person of color. I don't want anyone that's like <laughs> light skin to play me. I love y'all. Y'all are my, my light skin sisters. Y'all are my sisters, girl, because we're a part of the same community. There shouldn't be a battle between the different skin tones. But for me, I want a dark skin, like a dark skin trans woman that's the same color as me to play me and share my story. And hopefully when she does play me, because this is going to happen now, speaking into existence. Hopefully when she does play me in the near future, she can really show like that I've really accomplished a lot of great things and great things have come from it. So, yeah. Yes. And I think that with Hollywood now, we don't have a lot of different representation Mm -hmm. of black women as a whole. Oh, yes. Like, I was going through this mind when I was like, I'm going to ask you this question. I was like, who who could play me in a movie? Like, there ain't no short black, you know, Mm -hmm. 
actors in my age range, I'm like, that can play me. They all tall and skinny and, you know, mm -hmm. this big. And I, they ain't no, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no, you know, we plus size actors. We need y'all. Step up. Matter Apply fact, for these like roles. Just, it's the directors. The directors Higher have this deal. mindset too. They have a mindset of what they want to see on set. And it's like, there's a lot of people that are want to be actors that are plus size, but they feel discouraged because they only see on television people that don't look like us. So it's like, when you see people that don't look like you on television, that's the, that's the, that's the thing about TV. You see things to inspire you. You learn new things from television. Television is to, sometimes it sways your emotions, how you think, how you process certain things. So it's like, when you have these people that don't look like you thinking and processing certain things that they don't really know too much about because they ain't experienced it because they ain't you. It's like, how can I really relate to you? That's why, like, I think one show that did it really, really well for me. Now, I feel like Orange is the New Black. Now, people are going to be like, oh, girl, that's not like, you know, you ain't been to jail. That's not your story. Mm -hmm. But in Orange is the New Black, there were plus size women in there, like plus size black women. Period. Like they were in that film. So it, it just it all depends on what you see on television and the people that look like you that you can really like grow this sense of familiarity familiar girl that word gonna trip me up you can feel similar with them likeness period <laughs> so y'all directors out there y'all directors out here y'all hear us hire some of our sisters we be back after commercial want your brand or business featured on the plug advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. Again, advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK. the last segment okay we're back i said we're back i said we're back we're back jesse <laughs> all right we're back with the last segment so this last segment um i usually call it dropping gems but i think i'm gonna change the name of it you know to fit this season mm -hmm. um so i want to ask you some questions like you know what would you tell the past version of yourself? What are the three things that you would tell mm. you as a kid that you would have loved to know? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. What would I tell myself as a kid? Um, I would tell myself that, this is a tough question, honestly. I've always thought about this too. Like if I could go back in time, like what would I tell myself? to um, change maybe not the outcome of things, but just how things went. I would tell myself that, one, I would say that I would tell myself you're beautiful because I feel like, you know, as kids, sometimes like as little black boys that may be coming up into themselves and they might realize that maybe this one thing isn't for them and they want something else. like. I would give myself more love and I would tell myself that, I would tell myself about positive affirmations. I feel like to affirm myself more positively. I would tell myself that the struggle, the struggle doesn't last forever. And that we may struggle in this moment and this time and we may be going through some seriously crazy things, but 
this struggle won't last forever. And I feel like I didn't start telling myself that until my senior year. Because when I had my senior year, that's when I thought like, okay, I can make it out of this situation. And in the future, it'll be better. But as a kid, I didn't have that mindset. I thought that my current troubles would be the troubles that I would have for the rest of my life. And so I would tell myself I'm beautiful. I would tell myself that, you know, the struggle doesn't always last forever. And I would also tell myself to have a forgiving heart that um, sometimes people do things and it may not be in their heart to do those things, but sometimes they're raised a certain way and they have a certain mindset. And it's like people teach people, you know, your parents teach you and what they teach you. If you retain most of that, then that's what you teach your kids. And it just goes from generation to generation to generation. And, you know, I was raised in a biblical home. Like I come from the South, like I was over in Florida living with my grandparents and they're all like pastors, preachers and everybody over there preach. And they don't preach, they in the choir. So <laughs> I had, I would tell myself like, you know, certain things that you've been through, whether it be with your parents who are from Africa and they have a mindset of stick within your culture, stay rooted in being African. Certain things that you do are of American people. Like me wanting to transition, that's an American mindset. That's not an African mindset me um having more black friends that's a american mindset not an african mindset because you know what's crazy is i think a lot of people from my culture have this stereotype that we're different from other black people now we do have different cultures we do have different cultures but at the end of the day when we all walk out the house we're the same skin tone and we all live in the same country so if we're all getting oppressed just the same why would we put these different labels on us to separate us instead of being one conjoined community? So that that's just something for me. And it's like, also with the forgiveness, just to run a little bit off of that too, it's like um, with these labels, it's like we fight a lot of battles in the black community itself. I say this to myself all the time. I feel like one, we're fighting not only our own skin tone, our own people, we're fighting all the different things that come along with it as well. We're fighting not only the people that don't like us and the people that oppress us, but we're fighting each other. Like, okay, I'm black and you're black and LGBT. Well, that can't coexist. There's only one specific way to be that type of black. Or I'm black and you're plus size and black. Oh no, I have to look at you differently because you're not my standard of blackness. I feel like we put these limitations and standards yeah. on being black. And I feel like those are certain things that have to change and evolve for us to really come together as a community. But yeah, those would be the things that I would tell myself, like have a forgiving heart, um, that the storm doesn't always last forever and that you're beautiful and it's okay to love yourself. And specifically in our community, it's like we have this standard of being black, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, if you do certain things, it's like, that's, mm -hmm. that's not even like, you know, that's not even... But it's like, why do we have to carry these stereotypical things? Why do our, why does our skin color mm -hmm. have to affect our personality traits or our likes or our interests or who we are as a person? Mm -hmm. um, why do we have to carry that burden, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like the stereotypes that are created about us aren't even created about us to be stereotypes. Mm -hmm. They're based off of things that we're going through in the moment in time right mm -hmm. um so as i get into you know going into 2023 i feel like stereotypes and labels are a big thing i know it's gonna take some time but i feel like stereotypes and labels are something that needs to be dismantled right i feel like that's something that we need to debunk mm -hmm. you know why are we creating these stereotypes of blackness you know mm -hmm. why can't we all just come together and say okay we're all black yeah. regardless of you know who you are what your interests are and what you want to do you know why are we creating these stereotypes of what it means to be a, bl a strong black woman what it means to be a happy black woman what it mm -hmm. means to be a joyful black woman mm -hmm. what it means to be a beautiful black woman why do we have these stereotypes and labels on our back um so you know i want you to tell the people where they can find you where they can get in contact with you and where they can tap into your youtube channel okay so my youtube is in the process of coming out 
but um i want to i'm gonna i'm rebranding my youtube right now um it's called amor lani so that's my name is mulani and amor which is my middle name means love and so love lani also meaning love me love yourself and so that's the that's kind of like what i want to move forward with with my channel is the concept of loving oneself wholly not in parts and you know loving yourself is something that doesn't come easy and i always say that self-love is an ever-changing battle some days you love yourself some days you're a 10 some days you're a five some days you're a two some days you're a 20. self-love is ever-changing so just because some days you feel like a five don't ever feel like you'll never be a 20 because it's going to come along and you can also find me on my instagram it is also a more lani and um when you go there i'm gonna have a lot of different makeup looks you may see my eyebrows transition from different things up the page that's not what you're there for okay <laughs> we dare to share likes and <laughs> to love on each other yes. and to uplift each other if you see my eyebrows pass them heart the picture pass them um, <laughs> and you can you find me so on facebook too as mulani amore um, if you ever want to share and have a conversation with me, I'm a very open person. That's another thing I feel like too. The world needs a lot more love, a lot more kindness. So if you ever feel like having a conversation with me and you DM me, you want to have a conversation, girl, I'm going to entertain it because you're a new person, potential new friend, potential new person I can share experiences with. So you can find me on those different platforms and yeah, hopefully new ones coming soon. Yes. So I'm excited to have you here, you know. We always, you know, comment and like each other's stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we share this support, this social support. And I wanted to have you here because I wanted you to know that I support you. And, you know, we got to stick in this together, sister yes. girls. Mm -hmm. So I support you. Um, and I support everything you're doing. You know, I might need you to give me a little beat down <laughs> because, you know, these little recess nerd glasses, mm -hmm. they had to go one day. <laughs> but... Yes, yeah, so I want to thank y'all for watching. We'll be back next week with, you know, something a little different with some flavor in your ear. I'll see y'all next time. Want your brand or business featured on The Plug? Advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. Again, advertise with us at PlugNetworkOnline.com. We got the eyes that are looking for you. Years of experience with natural, carefully handcrafted products makes PK Powders your go-to for all skincare needs. Owned and operated by licensed esthetician Precious Kental, PK Powders provides a myriad of solutions to keep you looking good, smelling great, and above all, maintain your skin's health. Located 1930 Bishop Lane, Suite 101, Louisville, Kentucky, right inside the Watterson Towers building. The play is PK.